It's time to learn, boys and girls. All right, bring it. Do you know the movie was shot in two different studios? Warner Brothers Studio in Burbank and Universal Studios in Hollywood? I knew it was Universal Studios because that's where the swimming pool's at, where they have the swimming pool scene, where they are in there multiplying. Actually, that happened in the exact same location, the same studio lot as where they have the uh, Home Alone house and also the Christmas Vacation house. All right, so you're actually teaching me something. My next thing was going to be, did you know that that was the swimming pool that was used in Christmas Vacation when they were all playing in the pool and then the, the pretty girl in red jumps in? So if I was like, whoa, that's crazy. I want to see how they do it. There's basically, from a satellite view, you can see in Universal Studios, there's a section that just looks like a little farmhouse and a little in-ground pool, and it's no frills. It's not even a farmhouse. It's probably more of just a regular house. And it's a set location. So for the gremlins, oh, and it's outdoors. So for the gremlins, they must have put up a wall or two to make it look like it was a YMCA for uh, Christmas vacation. Because I'm this dorky. I went and looked at the scenes and said, how can this be the same pool? It's definitely the same pool because you can see by the ring around it. There's a certain like design flair to the top of it. It's an indoor pool, but it's, you know, you know how indoor pools always have some decorative thing coming out of the top of the lip. So it's sure, definitely the sure. same pool. But in Christmas Vacation, they just put up a bunch of like fake trees behind the diving board. I love Hollywood magic. <laughs> but it looked like it was an outdoor pool, actually. I don't think it was an indoor pool. Oh, if I said indoor, I apologize. I, I meant in-ground. Every time I said oh, indoor, in-ground. pretend that, Yeah, it's an in-ground pool, completely outdoors. The more that I study these studios and the more that I get used to what is really filmed in a studio versus what is really filmed outdoors, it's getting easier. So as I was, we were watching this the other day, me and Amy, this was our Christmas movie. And we're watching it and I'm like, damn, this, and it's leading right to my next bullet here. This area, Kingston Falls, which I always thought was some town, my entire life, I wondered what town that was. Was it a Pennsylvania town? Cause it was so snowy. Turns out it was in Universal Studios lot on the soundstage. And now that I'm kind of yeah. aware of how they make movies a lot more, I'm looking at it and I go, you know what? This looks a lot like, what was it called? Twin Valley, Valley, uh, the big center for Back to the Future. And sure enough, it was. So a year later, after Gremlins, they clean up all the snow, and that's where the clock tower is. Hill Valley. Hill Valley. Thank you. Twin Pines Mall. There's so many names in that movie. Twin <laughs> yeah. Pines. That's what you were thinking. Do you know in the original script, the Gremlins eat Billy's mom? <laughs> really? Yeah, it's a much, much darker story. It's an incredibly darker story. This movie, when it came out, was still a lot more horror than I think people were expecting. This was one of those movies that was fighting with the PG-13, not fighting with it, but getting the PG-13 rating because, you know, they were starting to say at that time, it's a lot of movies that aren't quite R, but aren't quite PG. You know, they show a little nudity. They might say the F word only once. Why don't we just give that a PG-13? This fell right into that time. So... That's not the reason this movie got softer, though. We were talking about Steven Spielberg. He kind of came in and he's like, you guys, you've got this cute little mogwai, Gizmo. You guys have him turning into Stripe. <laughs> How about you don't do that and have Gizmo run around the entire movie? So the whole movie was changed. There was never supposed to be a Gizmo who was, you know, the Gizmo that we came to know. Gizmo was supposed to turn into Stripe. Oh, so he wasn't going to be like a Mogwai holdout. He was going to actually become yeah. the villain. Yeah. <laughs> and the end of the script actually had one of those kind of like catch endings where they put him in a box and they were like, all right, we got to remember to get him. And at the end, it was like, oh, no, what did we do with the last Mogwai? And here it's like at the bottom of a lake giggling because, you know, it's going to come out and turn into gremlins again. Totally different movie. Totally different movie. The whole scene where uh, the mom, which, by the way, the mom's a badass. She was killing them gremlins with like just no she's the one that put him in the microwave right yeah could you uh, my mom could never do that <laughs> she did go pretty hardcore ninja there for a while that one scene man she was like putting him in the toaster and she had a knife and she threw him in the microwave they were yeah she was taking him out one after the next it was incredible she had one at a headlock giving it a noogie while with her feet she was karate kicking another <laughs> under the jaw i mean she was so good and uh all of that was supposed to be billy in the script she would have been eaten at this point. Yeah. Yeah. He goes up and he finds a, his dead mother. That's insane. And then he, he fights the gremlins in the house. Like there's certain scenes in that movie. Like when they go up the stairs to the attic and see like all like the cabbage looking pods that the other gremlins like popped out of. 
Like that always freaked me out. Like I didn't eat Brussels sprouts for a while after seeing that scene. They were great effects. Just watching this again and seeing the close up on the gremlins faces and seeing those pods, like they were really, really good effects at the end when the gremlins melt. Like, yeah. holy shit, that looks great. That's another scene that <laughs> stuck with me, man. We had a whole party. We watched part two afterwards, which is even sillier, but the special effects are great on that too. <laughs> All right. So the scene where the gremlins watched Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs was actually the first time Joe Dante, who's the director, has ever directed so many creatures. The crew had to use every single gremlin puppet they had. So when you watch that scene, that's all of them. Wow. <laughs> I thought that was cool. So they're all crammed in there one way or the other. Because some of them are just silhouettes against the movie screen. Like Some of them they actually show singing along, but some of them are just like shot from the back. So they're yeah. all in there, huh? Yeah, supposedly every single... Puppet they had was like, it's still time. <laughs> All puppets on deck. <laughs> Writer Chris Columbus. We owe him a lot. I'm as an American. Yeah. Home Alone. Writer Chris. Uh, Goonies. <laughs> Discovering America. Wrote the original Gremlin script as a spec <laughs> script. So he actually never expected this Gremlins thing to ever be made. It was a spec script intended more as a writing sample to showcase his talents. Again. Never was supposed to be a movie. And somebody read the spec script and said, why don't wow. we develop this into a movie? Uh, okay. Just a writing exercise for him, huh? Yeah, that's it. Corey Feldman was in this movie. Corey Feldman was involved in filming another movie at the same time as Gremlins. During the production of Gremlins, Feldman was also working on what, Scott? I don't know. Don't tell mom the babysitter's dead? No, he's, he definitely wasn't working on that because he's not in it. Oh. Friday the 13th, the final chapter. I wouldn't have guessed that. Well, he would have to leave on shooting days from Gremlins to go do his scenes for Friday the 13th. And he was in part, uh, he was in the, the one previous, right? So he wasn't in the, which one is the final chapter is five or is it four? Jason lives, then Jason's back then Jason's back again. Part eight. <laughs> I forget them all, man. I'm such Dude, a bad you're fan. You're asking the wrong guy. Uh, I'm going to have to catch up on it. All right. So I think this was the fourth one. Uh, I got it wrong. Who fucking knows? Anyway, there's probably a scene where you see Corey Feldman and then he has to get up and run to the other set and then film a scene for Friday the 13th. I just thought that was neat that there could be the chance of seeing one actor in two scenes in two different movies filmed on the same day. So I reached out to Corey Feldman on Twitter and I asked him. Didn't respond. No, but I'll keep you posted. <laughs> I mean, if Michael J. Fox could do family ties and do back to the future at the same time. Like that seems like a greater feat. Don't you think? Yeah. I guess I didn't think that maybe Michael J. Fox was leaving the set after being Alex P. Keaton and then having to switch gears and go into, was he doing that? Oh, he very much was. Yeah. Okay. So we don't need you, Corey. Yeah. That's why he wasn't originally playing Marty. That's why uh, it was originally, uh, what's Eric his name? Stoltz, can... yeah. Eric Stoltz. Yeah. Um, Rocky from mask. Right. That's how I know him. Rocky from the mask. Yeah. Was he in anything else but that? I don't know. But like, yeah, at first Eric Stoltz had the role and they were like, yeah, this isn't really the guy we want. But Michael J. Fox is already booked doing this other thing. He was finally like, OK, you know what? If I can have these concessions, I'll do both at the same time. And he literally was going, you know, sometimes pulling 14, 16 hour days, going from one set to the other set for Family Ties and for Back to the Future. It's a lot of work for a kid. Although how hard is acting? <laughs> I don't know, man. I mean, I'd rather be a kid actor than work in the fryer at McDonald's. Yeah, good point. You get paid a lot better, that's for sure. Let me tell you about Hoyt Axton. Hoyt Axton, who played Billy's father. That's a name. Yeah, I know. Why wasn't I named Hoyt? <laughs> Hoyt Axton, who played Billy's father, wasn't initially considered for the role. He was brought in more for his soothing storytelling voice. But then they heard him and they were like, listen, we need you to be more than just a narrator. You're going to be the dad now. Oh, wow. That's an upgrade. Yeah. Hoyt was like, oh, I got some stupid, shitty little role. I'm like, guess what? We're expanding it. I think he's great in the movie. I don't know that I've seen him in anything else, but he's great in that movie. Rand Peltzer. Yeah. The bathroom buddy. But not if you have the bathroom buddy. All right. And here's my last one. The inspiration for Gizmo's appearance isn't officially confirmed as being a specific dog breed, but the intention to make him look cute and endearing is accurate. He was designed based on dogs. Yeah, I could see that. Really? I thought that was kind of weird. It was like, why didn't you go with like a uh, three toed tree sloth or, uh, you know, something that was a little bit more of that size? <laughs> I didn't think a dog would be what they'd uh, be referencing, but OK, Gizmo was based on a dog. 
Yeah, I think you're really underestimating the size of a tree sloth. Those things are pretty huge. I may be. Not the smartest on tree sloths. <laughs> I mean, I'm surprised you picked that one out because of its size, because they're bigger than most <laughs> dogs are. I mean, like, I'm thinking like a, a toy poodle or like a miniature chow or something. Like, the only thing different between a mogwai and a dog is that, like, mogwai has, like, a no snout, almost more like a, a, a pug would be or like a shih tzu or something like that. All right. I guess if you're thinking about those dogs. I never think about those dogs because those dogs don't have noses. <laughs> a dog's supposed to have a long nose. Right. I don't know what those are. <laughs> They're horribly inbred mutations to give people the pleasure dogs that they want. 